Oh Jesus, you are awesome. We bless your name, oh God. He is worthy. He is a faithful father. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Mm. Somebody say the king is here. Yes, Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elin Stream. That was wonderful this morning. Hallelujah. To God be praised. Amen. 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 Wow. Again, welcome everyone to the presence of the Most High. You are welcome in Jesus' name online in house. Just give me a few minutes of your time and um, I will pass across his message this morning. Amen. Pressure. Somebody say pressure. Yeah, say it again, pressure. You know, tires, vehicle tires, they have specific uh, pressure that they run by. If you overfill, if you, if you put too much air pressure in a tire, that tire will most likely bust. If you put too little pressure in a tire, it will drag the vehicle and eventually it will bust. But if you put the right amount, you know, even engineers tell us it helps with the consumption of fuel. Do you see how tire pressure relates to fuel consumption in a vehicle? Ordinary tire. When your tires are not balanced, guess what? Your vehicle consumes more gas. It's so amazing that pressure is an important aspect of life. But when it comes to us individuals, men, we don't want pressure. Hello? Is there anyone here that loves pressure? There are a few of us that work well under pressure, but we don't want that pressure. Is that not so? We will still prefer to do the work without the pressure, but even when the pressure comes, we function so well. Do you understand? We func it's as if, all right, uh, all our antennas are out. Everything begins to function, you know, like, like a machine. Things begin to happen because we're under pressure. But deep inside, we will wish that, oh, I don't want that pressure. You know, it's like when I have a busy week and maybe I have two or three messages to prepare that week. By Monday, I'm already, uh, how do I put it, jittering. I'm like, Lord, you got to talk. Father, you got to speak. You know, everything I'm thinking my mind, my body, my spirit, my eyes, my heart is waiting for God to say something. Even when I'm sitting down, I'm expectant. But you know, it's as if the father is just smiling and saying, no, son, I'm going to put you under pressure first. <laughs> you know, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and then I go back to old notes. I'm trying to conjure. Let me use that word now. I am trying to conjure. It is not what God has said. I'm trying to conjure. So I go back to old notes and I start flipping and I start, and the Holy Spirit is smiling. He said, did I tell you to go to the old notes? I said, but Lord, you are not speaking. He said, patience. But guess what? With every day that passes, the pressure builds. With every day that passes, the pressure builds. And I continue. If by Friday I don't have a word, oh no. My mind is no longer with anybody. I'm telling you. I hear you, but I'm not hearing you. Because the only person I want to hear now is God. So everything everybody is saying to me comes in one way and goes in the other way. I am no longer listening to anybody. God have mercy on me if by Saturday nothing happens. Saturday night to Sunday morning, I may not sleep. Still waiting, you know, then as a man, you know what? I go and prepare myself and say, in case God does not speak, it is a lie. God will always speak. I go and prepare something in case God does not speak. And so I conjure something up. Again, conjure, the word conjure. I conjure something up. 
and I'm like, okay, if God don't say anything, I'm ready. Then I come to church Sunday morning, and God still does not speak. And we're praising and we're worshiping. I say, well, Father, if you have not spoken, that means what I conjure is what you are saying. And I heard the Holy Spirit clearly say to me, son, I'm not saying that. If you say that, that is you. Then I'm like, God, what do I say? He said, you just go there, open your mouth, and I'll feel it. That's the last word he says. You go there. He said, because if I t there are some things that if I tell you before you preach it, you will reason it out. Did you hear what I said? He said, there are some things if I tell you before you preach it, by the time you're preparing it, you will reason it out and you will take out my thoughts from it. And God says, so when I need my thoughts delivered the way I want it delivered, he said, I will not give you the word until you're on the pulpit. When you cannot change it. No, I said this, I'm saying all of this to talk about pressure. Most of the time, the things we allow to put pressure on us should not put pressure on us. Because God has already taken care of it. He's only open. I use that word open. That we would trust in his ability to take care of it and rely on him. Pressure is good, but pressure is bad. You know, talking about pressure again, we can, we can take it to peer pressure. Pressure that makes you do bad things. Friends, because your friends are doing some things, you want to feel among, you want to belong, and you want to do the same. Let me tell you something. If you are not cut out for what they are doing, if you do it, you will fail in it. If you are not cut out for what they are doing, if you do it, you will fail in it. You know, I remember many, many years ago, you know, a couple of my friends, we snuck out of the house. You know, we, we met, we snuck out of the house to go to a party. My dad, you know, I know his timing. By nine o'clock, he's sitting in front of the TV watching the news, but the news is the one watching him. He's asleep. He's sleeping. I know that. And then a few minutes after that, he gets up, staggers to his room, and is off to bed. And he will wake up on the dot of 3.30, between 3.30 and 4 a.m. in the morning. He will get up. So I had planned myself. I left home around 11. My mom does not go to bed until maybe midnight or thereabout. But once I go into my room and I lock the door, my mom won't bother me anymore. So around 11, I locked my door and I snuck out of the house. And I went to a party. And we were enjoying, you know, we were dancing and we were... And then suddenly there was a breaking news. Even the DJ stopped playing music to announce the news. One of the best presidents Nigeria never had died that night. Haolowo. It was a... Br I mean, every household heard that news that night... People who were sleeping were woken up. My mother went to wake up my father to tell him I would have died. And I was at a party. <laughs> I had planned everything and it was working well until that bad news came. And I knew that very soon my father would go around the house to check on everybody and to deliver the news to everybody, I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> come and see pressure come upon me. In an instant, there was so much pressure. I know the sad part of it was I could not leave the party to go home by myself. At that time of the night, it is unsafe to be by yourself. So I beckoned to my friend that we stay close together. I said, Bola, let's go. And he said, no. I said, didn't you hear the news? He said, well, he said, his dad doesn't care. I said, but my dad cares. <laughs> I said, so we got to go. He said, no. <laughs> you know, eventually I got some people that were living in the area and we left. All the while, you know, they were just strolling and enjoying it. I was walking very fast, but I would walk fast when I lose sight. I would slow down for them to catch up again. I was under so much intense pressure. And you know what? When I got home, my father didn't do anything. 
everything I was expecting, nothing. My mom told him the news, and he looked, oh, okay, so he's dead, period. He didn't even bother to disturb any of the children. Whereas, I was, I was already killing myself before my time. <laughs> Somebody say pressure. You know, if I ask any of you now, you have stories to tell about pressure. Things that have come upon you that at the end of the day you were wondering, why was I even thinking about this? Why did I put so much pressure on myself concerning this thing? Because God had already taken care of it. If we will learn to trust in God, if we will learn to listen to his voice, if we will learn to know his ways, guess what? It will minimize the amount of pressure that we go through daily. And you know, you, the sad part of pressure is the more the pressure you put on yourself, listen to this, the more the pressure you put on your heart. And the more pressure you put on your heart, the more susceptible you are to sicknesses and diseases. So as good as pressure may be to help us do some things, it is not good for our physical body. Let's go into the word this morning. You know, so the word pressure is defined as the amount of force exerted per area. The amount of force exerted per area. How much pressure are you putting into your life? How much pressure are we parents putting upon our children? How much pressure are we putting upon ourselves because of the society? How much pressure are we putting upon our lives because we want to, we want to maintain a certain standard of living? How much pressure? You got, to ask, you got to get to a point where you ask yourself, is it really worth it? You have a house that is massive, that is big, 28 rooms. Whether you like it or not, you will only sleep in one room. You have several types of bed in the houses, all scattered all about. Whether you like it or not, you, you can only sleep on one bed. You have all the delicacies. Guess what? Every day they prefer a buffet for you to eat. You cannot eat more than your stomach can contain. Is that not so? So why the pressure? Oh, you have, you have fantastic vehicles. You have to think every day, okay, which car am I taking out? Pressure. What clothes matches the vehicle I'm driving today? Pressure. Okay, which driver, which chauffeur will I use for this particular vehicle? The other one is rough. Pressure. And we load ourselves daily. The Bible says we should load ourselves daily with the benefits of God. Not with pressure. Are you listening to me? When things come into our lives that we have to exert so much pressure, every time we lose the ability to reason and do important things in life. You know, that's why I love, I love, I just love this young man, Zuckerberg. The guy said, listen, I don't have time to think about which clothes I'm going to wear. He said, that's why I only have, is it white t-shirts? I just have them all. I just pick one, pick a pant, I'm done. I was listening to Bishop Oyedeku also the other day. And he said, I cannot bother myself to start thinking of what I'm going to wear. He said, that's why all I have is white suits. He said, that's all I have. He said, I pick one, I wear it, pick the tie corresponding, I put it on, pick the shoe, and I'm out of the house. He said, I'm not fighting the wardrobe looking for what I'm going to wear. Wardrobe fighters, you know yourself. <laughs> pressure. Tell somebody pressure. pressure. Come on. Remove the pressure. You know, I, 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 I'm leaning towards those areas now in my life also. I want to empty my wardrobe and just fill it with just one item. Just fill it with one item. So I'm not thinking in the morning, does this match this? No, it matches. Period. Let me ease the pressure in some areas. Let's go to John chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, 
And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities. So Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. And Jesus answered, dear woman, that is not our problem. When the wine runs out at the party, why is it the problem of those of us who are invited to the party? When did that become our own agenda at the party? We came to the party to celebrate with them, drink their wine with them. When it is finished, we go home. Why is that our problem? But the mother was transferring the pressure from the party owner through the party planner to Jesus. They were already under pressure. I'm sure the bride and the bridegroom must have been, we are in trouble. Our party is a flop. Hey, the party planner must have been, you're not, the, the bride must be telling the party planner, you're not getting your money. You were, you were supposed to plan enough wine for this party you did not. We're not paying you a dime. And the party planner must be thinking, after all this work, they will not pay me. After all I've done, they will not pay me. And maybe the man or the woman is pacing about. And then uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw the guy said, what's wrong with you? He said, they don't have wine. They said they are not going to pay me. Why would they not pay me? And Jesus' mother said, cool down, don't worry. I take care of it for you. And she went to Jesus. Son, their wine is finished. And Jesus said, woman, woman. Look at your neighbor and say, woman. When did that become our problem? Apology to women, I love them. They have a way of taking what is not our problem and making it our problem. The neighbor's yard needs mowing. They see it. Nobody has mowed it. We have mowed our own. And they look at you and they say, don't you see that the neighbor's yard needs mowing? When did that become our problem? The heart that God gave women. They care too much. A woman is cooking. And you are thinking, okay, it will just be enough food for those of us in the house. <laughs> One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours in the kitchen. And then the foods are ready in trays. Ah, who did we cook for? <laughs> Pray, tell your neighbor pressure. And so Jesus' mother, Jesus answered the mother and said, Woman, that is not our problem. And Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. But his mother said, Okay, your time has not, no problem. He told the guy, he said, call the servants. When the servants came, he said, look at that man. That's my son. Whatever he tells you, do. The final transference of pressure. He said, hey, B, you said it's not your problem, right? You will find out it's your problem now. So he called all the servants. He said, stay here. Look at him. Whatever he tells you to do, do. He will provide the wine. And the mother left. And Jesus looked. He said, okay, I know what to do. I will solve it in a ridiculous way. He said, go and fetch water. And the people went, they fetched the water. After they had fetched the water, they said, we have fetched the water. He told them, without leaving the same place, he said, now, take the water. Go and serve to the governor of the feast. <laughs> See, he got the pressure, feel the pressure, and transferred back the pressure. <laughs> and the guys that feel the water, <laughs> Jesus have mercy. He said, we went to the well. It was from the well we drew water. We are 100% certain this is water. And this man said, take it to the governor and present it to him as wine. Pressure. 
and the servant is going to say, today's my last day of work. He said, guys, it has been nice working with you. But as I go today, <laughs> I know I am fired. <laughs> and he took the wine. And, you know, he said, governor, they said they've, they, I should give you this. And as he was handing over the wine, the man was taking off his apron. He said, well, I'm done. I'm on my way out. <laughs> last day of work. And the governor drank out of it. Said, wow, this is good wine. <laughs> said, yeah, 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 yeah. We got good wine. <laughs> You see, the pressure we go through, God has already taken care of it. He's already taken care of it. Look at how that story went and look at the ending of it. God had already taken care of the pressure. So let me tell you this morning, don't let anybody or anyone put you under any pressure. The pressure you allow is the pr pressure you want. Don't take any pressure from anybody. Hey, if somebody says, hey, pastor, give me a thousand dollars. If I don't have, I cannot be pressured into having. Because pressure will not provide that money. It's only grace and God and blessing that can provide that money. And if that does not happen, hello, I will sleep soundly. I will not be pressured. But you know, but there are some of us. Hmm. You go to the store and you see something you like. And pressure mounts. And then you're thinking, ah, that thing I saw, $800. Somebody else can pick it. So you go, you go into the store, you take it from where it is, you take it to the children's section, and you hang it and you hide it there. And then you're like, Father, you got to provide eight hundred dollars for me to get that thing. And, and you're praying, pressure for what? For what? And then, per adventure, the Lord provides, but there are two needs that need to feed on the provision. And you're like, Father, this has to go with the one in the store. You have to take care of the important one at home. Hello, some of us, don't we do that? then you go there, you're smiling and you get there, it is gone. Somebody discovered your stash. <laughs> Somebody discovered your stash. And especially people like me, I'm always the blessed one that discover people's stash in the, in the store. Because I'm just somewhere, I just, you know, and I see the stash somewhere. Ah, this, this is good. And it's not expensive. Let's go. But I know it is somebody's stash. Then I say, Father, I thank you for making this person hide it for me. <laughs> pressure, people, pressure. That's what I'm talking about. Don't let anyone make you manifest before your time. They tell you, oh, your mates have done this. Your mate. Hello, let them enjoy it. My time is coming. I've shared it on this altar before. Ten years after I finished high school was when I entered college. Ten years, exactly ten years, that was when I entered college. My best friend that we grew up together was my lecturer in college. Hey, but I told myself I was not under pressure. All I want is a degree. I am doing it so that, I, so that I can convince myself I can do it. And I did it and I finished it. And then pressure mounted again. Get a job. I'm telling you, the pressure was so great. I looked and looked for job until job looking became my name. When people see me, they know I'm looking for a job. Pressure. I'm talking about pressure this morning. And I did that. I looked, I looked. I did interviews. I did so many things. You know, I, there was an interview I did that was so ridiculous. I mean, I wrote the, back then, the main focus was to get into a bank. So I wrote the interview. I passed excellently. They invited me for the first interview. I did it. 
day the second day the third and then they just told me to come in one day for an interview i didn't know okay so i went in that day i came in early i sat down a lot of other people came by noon the people that came had gone i was still there so i went i said excuse me i've been waiting they said well just keep waiting now the person that will attend to you is not is not ready yet i closed with them that day from eight to five at closing guess what somebody came out and he walked up to me and said congratulations you just passed your interview he said that was the final interview you just passed after wasting a whole day i was under pressure if they had told me the interview was to wait a whole day i would gladly wait do you know i will bring things to occupy me to wait but they did not tell me Pre they put me on pressure that's what life does life does not tell you what is ahead of you but pressure is put upon you so don't let anybody and guess what the, the sad part of it after i had done everything i was awaiting the letter to start work and the final letter came and said i was sorry they, they, they still did not take me Thank God for Jesus. Because I will have gone back there. Look for the man that made me wait all day. And I will have punched his face. I'm not joking. The natural me would have done that. Because after you put me through all that, you now sent me a letter at home. They will not go scot-free. But thank God for Jesus. I took it and I sucked it up. And then the Holy Spirit began to talk to me. He said, son, did I tell you to look for work? I said, but Lord, he said, there is no but. He said, I told you, wait on me. Pressure. Tell somebody pressure. While waiting on the Holy Spirit again, pressure led me away. For another eight months, I was away from my wife because of pressure. And then one day, you know, I just sat down and the Holy Spirit said, what are you doing here? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm trying to feed my family. And the Holy Spirit said, did I say I cannot feed your family? I said, but Lord, I'm the head of the home. He said, and he told me, he said, who put pressure on you? I said, myself. He said, now remove the pressure. And I took off that pressure, got home that day, packed my load, told my sister, I'm going to Lagos. I moved from Abuja. I said, I'm going to Lagos to be with my family for the weekend. I'll be back on Monday. I knew 129%, 50%, I was not coming back. <laughs> but if I had said I was not coming back, they would not have let me go. They would have lectured me on the reason why I needed to stay. So I left. I didn't even tell my wife I was not going back. Monday morning, when I was supposed to leave and go back, she was on her way to work. said, you're not going today? I said, no. I said, I'm done. I'm not going back. <sighs> okay. She didn't say anything. She went to work. And I started praying again. And the Holy Spirit, Spirit began to reveal what he wanted me to do. Sometimes, when we let pressure come into our life, we lose the voice of God. Pressure takes away the voice of reason. Pressure takes away the plans of God. But until I returned back to that house and I sat down and I started praying and I stopped worrying. Because guess what? Eight months that I was away, I was not paying the bills in that house. The money I was making was just enough to feed me to make me go back every two weeks, to travel back every two weeks, to see my wife, and then to go back again, and to have money for transport back there, I had nothing to show for eight months of work. Pressure. Whereas if I had stayed at home, God would have sorted it out faster. Are you listening? I'm talking to somebody this morning. It's a specific message. Don't let any human pressure make you do what you should not do. 
don't let pressure make you manifest before your time. Many people show themselves before it is their time. You know, we were reading a scripture the other day in my house in the morning, and it says, some people pretend to be rich, and they are poor. Some people, they pretend to be poor, and they are rich. They don't have any problem because everybody assumes they are poor. So nobody is saying, give me, give me, give me. Hello? No pressure. <laughs> there is no help me, give me, give me, give me. Uh -uh. But the one that is pretending to be rich, the little that that person has, give me, help me, help me. Family in problem, give me, give me. Pressure. Let me do the will of God. John chapter 7 verses 2. 2 to 6, and then we'll do a couple of reading. But soon it was time for the Jewish festival of shelters. And Jesus' brothers said to him, Live here and go to Judea, where your followers can see your miracles. Look at the excuse they are giving him. Live here, go to Judea, where your followers can see your miracles. And they, they reason with him, they said, You can't become famous. If you hide like this, if you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers didn't believe in him. And look at the reply of Jesus. Now is not the right time for me to go, but you can go anytime. You got to know your time. The fact that people are doing things does not mean you should do it. The fact that people are doing things and they are failing does not mean you, can, you, should, you, uh, you should not do it because if you do it, you will succeed. If you know your time. They told him, go so that you can be famous. Look at their reasoning. But do you know, before this scripture, the Bible said, after he was tempted and he came down from temptation. The Bible said, the spirit of the Lord went and spread his fame abroad. He was already famous before this even came into being. And now they are telling him, according to the timeline of men, now is the time, because they have gathered in a place. You got to understand that pressure will make you do things at the wrong time. No, let me put it this way. It's like uh, an upcoming artist. You know, upcoming. You know, you're still not there. And somebody says, oh, come and, be, come and perform the opening to my program, you know, to my show in front of 100,000 people. And you know within you that you are not ready, you are not prepared. Your voice is not trained well yet. And you go... And, you know, because of pressure, you go there, oh, this is my time, this is my time. And you go there and you mess up. You have killed destiny. Because the people there will only remember you for the crookedness of your voice. They will only remember you for the mistakes that you made on that stage. Nobody will remember that, oh, this guy can do better. Pressure. Somebody say pressure this morning. Be careful what pressure makes you do. And Jesus told them, nope, I'm not going. You can do it anytime. And the Bible says in verse 9, after saying these things, Jesus remained in Galilee. He didn't go. He remained. Don't, you know, whatever family pressure, whatever peer pressure, if you sense it is not time, please don't fall for it. Oh, somebody tells you, oh, everybody's doing computer science now. Let's go do it. Hello? If you go and do it, hello, it, will not, it may not prosper you. Because if it is not what God has called you to be. Do you understand me? You got to do what God has called you to do. So many things, you know, it's, it's just sad. I got to say this. It's just sad that people exploit each other. They tell you, oh, the new thing is a certificate in this. All you need to pay is $600. And by the time these people collect $600 from a million people, they are set. And the, six, the one million people are struggling to fill maybe a thousand spaces. But they are set. They've collected their money and they've moved on. 
they've exploited. Well, whether you kill yourself there, that's your own problem. At least you have the paper to show for it. Pressure. Don't do things because people are doing it. Now everybody is a coach. Even the person that is still in the diaper is a coach. He's a life coach. People who have zero experience of life, they are now coaches. Somebody tells you how to make a million dollars in one week. That person does not have a thousand dollars in the account. And he's telling you how to make a million dollars in one week. Hello, if you would teach me how to make a million dollars, show me the million dollars that is, don't even show me a million dollars. You got to show me at least 52 million dollars for one year that you've been making a million dollars every week. Tell your neighbor pressure. Somebody said, I, I, I listened to somebody this week, he said, anything he buys, if he does, he, he said the example is this, he says, if I'm going to buy something, and that thing is worth a thousand dollars, then he said, I must have at least ten thousand dollars in my account for me to buy something worth a thousand dollars. He said, if I don't have that ten thousand, then I'm not buying. Then I'm not ready for it yet. Look at how that guy took away pressure. Some people will have exactly that one thousand. And then after you have bought it, how do you maintain it? Pressure, pressure now. Pressure that God did not put there. It now comes. You bought a house worth $500,000 when you cannot maintain it and then you can no longer sleep. Tell your neighbor, be careful of pressure. One or two more scriptures and then we'll close. Galatians chapter 2 verse 11. But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face for what he did was very wrong. The Bible says, verse 12, when he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile Christians who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some friends, underline that word, some friends, of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. Pressure. When the friends of James were not there, Peter will fellowship with the Gentiles, eat with them, enjoy their food. As soon as the earlier than thou people showed up in town, Peter too robed up and joined the earlier than thou. And he stopped going to the Gentiles. And the Bible said, and Peter, and Paul went to him and he said, you hypocrites. You may be my senior in the Lord, but this that you have done is so hypocritical. He said, when these hooligans, when they were not in town, you ate with the Gentiles. Now, when the hooligans showed up, you disappeared. Pressure. Some of us, the company we keep, we are not proud of them. But when the better company shows up, what do we do? Pew. See, if you are my friend, if better company shows up and you go, don't come back. Did you hear me? Do not come back. You are no longer welcome back. You are either with me in the mud, in water being cleaned, or on the podium together. We are, we are together all through or we're not together at all. That's what, that's what Paul told Peter. He said, when these people were not there, you ate and you fellowship with the Gentiles. You're eating with the Gentiles, encourage them in Christ. Your being there showed them the love of God. But now you stepped out because of pressure, you have dampened their faith. Don't let pressure make you dampen the faith of others. If your friends are home believers and you are comfortable and you are not sinning with them and you are encouraging them, listen to me, don't drop them. The Bible says, who knows whether God will use you to save them. But if you leave, who will save them? Don't let anybody pressure you. Don't let people tell you, oh, you are no, you are no longer holy because you keep an unholy company. 
Hello? If, as long as you know truly within yourself, that they are not affecting you or drawing you or enticing you in any way, but you still find that you have strength that to draw them out of this, please stay with them until you save them. Please stay with them until you save them. Because the salvation of their soul is what is more important to God than anything. That is what is more important. Don't let pressure. Do not change who you are because of the influence of others. You know, I stopped trying to speak uh, like an American because I realized I'm too old for it now. So I will not let pressure pressurize me. So when I talk to people and they can't hear me, I pick my words and I try and say it slowly so that they can hear me. But I will not squeeze my nose, lift up my tongue, and speak, how, how, how will I speak? And I, I won't do that. I won't do that. I won't do that. Nah. I will speak. You can hear me. I will speak so you can hear me. My kids, thank God for them. They have the way they speak. If I don't hear that, slow down, slow down. We have one. That one. <laughs> low volume. Murmuring. And speaking. <laughs> I, th I think a lot of parents identify with that. <laughs> I will like, slow down, slow down. Speak loudly and slowly. Let us hear what you're saying. Don't be influenced. Don't be influenced. Some people, because they want to fill in, they look for jargons in English. They embellish their words. Ab I use the word abnormally. What you could have said in one sentence will take you about four or five sentences embellished without meaning. Trying to get across what people don't need. Refuse to be influenced negatively. Be influenced positively. Don't let pressure make you become who you're not. And lastly, Genesis 16 verse 1. Now, Sarai, Abraham's wife, had not been able to bear children for him, but she, but she had an Egyptian servant named Agar. So, Sarai said to Abraham, The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abraham, under pressure. Somebody say under pressure. The man under pressure. The man did not think about it. The man was not bothered whether he had a child or not. The man was satisfied with his wife. And the woman came and put him under pressure. And he said, go and sleep with my servant. Paradventure, God will build a family for me through her. And the man reluctantly agreed. And when the servant realized she was pregnant, trouble started in the house. Because of the pressure one woman created. Are you listening to me? If something is wrong, no matter how right they paint it, don't let pressure make you do it. The problem that this pressure created, the world is still suffering for it today. Just because of this pressure, the race, the generation that came forth, they keep tormenting us today pressure. Why? If the man had waited, if the woman had waited for the Lord, Isaac was a sure banker. God had spoken and nothing was going to keep Isaac from coming at the right time. Nothing. But the woman moved faster than God. Four years faster. Pressure. You know, don't give in to pressure that is against the promise of God for your life. Don't you ever give in. If God says I'm doing this, wait for God to do it. Don't take shortcuts. Let me close with this. I've shared it also before. I sat for an exam in, in my 300 level in the university. And I, I mean I studied. In all fairness to me, I studied. It, the course is philosophy of religion. I studied. I read books. I jotted notes, I made notes, I crammed, I did everything, and I went in, you know, the, 
the classwork for that exam was about 20%. The exam was 80%. And I went in and I wrote the ex and I went in to write the exam. As we started, I had not written the first page. By the time I flipped to the second page, I don't know if anybody has experienced this before. I blanked out. I went, I mean I went blank. I sat back, I tried to remember all the things I've studied. Nothing came. I was blank and I sat there. And I said, Lord, what are you doing? I cannot fail this class. It was a 300 level class. I had one more year to graduate. I said, Lord, I cannot fail. Nothing came. Then the people sitting next to me were talking. You know, they were talking about it, about the questions. And they were giving nuggets to one another. And these nuggets, if I pick them up, can help me recover. When I realized what was happening, I took my paper, I stood up, and I walked to the invigilator. And I said, I'm done. The guy looked at me and said, what do you mean? You're only about 30 minutes in. I said, I'm done. I said, I don't remember anything. And I'm not going to sit down there and cheat. I said, I'm not going to sit down there and cheat. I said, I would rather fail honorably. Come back next year, take the course, and get it over with. And the guy looked at me and said, okay. Is your funeral. And he took the paper and I walked out. And I went into the library immediately. I pulled out my notes. I started dusting my books. I said, oh, now we got to study again. So I was planning to take, to retake that class as an additional class in my 400 level. When the results came out, we were in the library studying. And you know, my friend said, oh, philosophy of religion result is out. I said, well, there's no point in me going. I know the call. I know the answer straight away. I had 20% from classwork. Maximum, I had another 10 or 15% for the page I wrote. So I know 35 is my maximum. So there is no way in heaven on earth that I was going to pass this course. So I said, don't worry, you guys go. So I sat down there. And then one of them went. The guy is also a professor now. And he came back. He said, Femi. You need to go and check that result. He said, because what I saw there, I said, what did you see? I failed. He said, no. I said, no, you did. it wasn't mine you looked. He said, go and check. And I went there to check, and I had passed well. And I looked, I'm like, this is not possible. And immediately, the lecturer stays in the basement. And I went into the basement of the faculty. I knocked on his door. He had some PhD students in there. And I entered. And I said, Good morning, sir. I came to say thank you. And he looked at me hmm? as if I didn't exist, and he kept doing his work. I said it three times. The man didn't respond. So I turned back, and I was going out. As I opened the door, he said, young man. Then I stopped, and I looked at him. He said, continue with your integrity. He said, the invigilator told me exactly what you said. He said, keep it up. And I walked out, and that's how I passed. I didn't let pressure move me to cheat. If I cheated, I could have passed, but I will always know I didn't pass. I didn't deserve it. But this one I was given. I know this is just grace. I did not cheat to get it. Do you understand? Don't let pressure make you do what you should not do. I'm going to stop here this morning. Tell your neighbor, don't let pressure make you do what you should not do. I don't know why God will have me preach this message today, but peradventure somebody is being pressured right now to do certain things. Please, don't do it. That's what God is saying. God is saying, don't allow that pressure to make you do that which you are being forced to do right now. Says God says, for I have a plan. If Abraham had waited for the plan of God, guess what? It will always come. But he had already created a problem that will never be solved because he gave in to pressure. May you not give in to pressure that will bring problems. In the name of Jesus, bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We adore you. Lord, we glorify your name, O oh God. Thank you for your word, for this is what you chose to tell your people today. Father, I pray for myself and everyone under the sound of my voice, in house, online, and anyone that will listen to this later, that none of us 
will fall for the pressure that will bring destruction in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, God, the amount of pressure that we need to do the right thing, Father, put it upon us, O oh God. Any pressure that will make us do that which is not right, Father, help us to recognize and to walk away from such. Help us to please you at all times and help us to glorify your name. We thank you, faithful Father. We give you praise and glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Still in that attitude this morning?